Hey everyone. So you can't see me too good right now. It's still pretty dark out, but opening up the machine shed here. Gonna be jumping in the 8410. I figured get an early start today. Move the grain cart down and put it away for storage down at one of our southern farms. I wanted to do that while everything is still nice and cold and the road isn't all sloppy full of mud and keep the grain cart clean. So, gonna get this fired up. Checked the fluids last night, but I didn't check the diesel fuel. Make sure that's topped off. I did plug it in, so hopefully this worked. I feel the engine block right now. Let's see if it's warm. Oh yeah. Don't have to wait for it to warm up quite as long. A lot easier starting. Once I finally get this down at the farm down there, I'm gonna unhook the 8410 from the grain cart and gonna hook on our sunflower saber blade disc. And I'm gonna try to disc up some corn stalks yet today too. So I got a full day ahead of me. It's about a two hour trip, maybe just under two hours to move this down here. This will only go about 20 miles an hour. Got fueled up. Just got on the road, turning my triple on. There is two cameras on the green cart, so I'm gonna turn the back camera on, make sure nobody's behind me, I'm blocking the road for them. These are infrared cameras, so even when it's dark out, you can still see what's going on, which is really nice. Oh, the goal right now is to get the grain cart down there without splashing through any mud or water puddles going down the road. The road is fairly dry, but there's still puddles here and there. So I'm gonna try to be careful and avoid those. Keep the grain cart clean as possible. Probably 10 minutes away, the sun's coming out, the water puddles are starting to get defrosted. Kind of slow down in a couple spots, squeeze in between these puddles here. Almost there. So, finally made it to the barn here. The disc is right there on the other side of the Challenger. Kind of need to move this out of the way. This is going to be my ride home, even if I do stay here in disc. Slight problem. Grain cart's got to go here in this spot. Challenger's in the way, so I was going to pull this out. Give me some space. And there is juice in the batteries, but not enough to get this thing started. So I got to wait for a dad or somebody to show up. And uh, we can get this thing jump started. Looks like the grain cart stayed pretty clean. There's a little bit of road sling on the auger, but not bad. Oh yeah, I got a little bit here. That's the worst of it. While I wait for somebody to show up with jumper cables, I might as well start unhooking this. Uh, at least the hydraulic hoses and the PTO, so that way when I do get it backed in the barn, it'll go a little bit quicker. I'm just waiting here and looking at the disc and I thought of this at some point yesterday I thought of this but uh I meant to bring a grease gun to grease everything before I started using it I don't think it's been greased since it's been washed so 
Hopefully dad has a grease gun on the pickup as well. Before I down here, I always felt like I was forgetting something too, but maybe that's what it was. Cylinders for this hood are not strong enough to hold it up anymore. So I found this pipe here to prop it up so we can get to the batteries. But yeah, these batteries aren't even that old. So it makes me wonder if something is turned on slowly draining the batteries. But once we get this fired up and let the batteries charge up a little bit, we'll have to make sure we turn the whole system off right here. That wasn't too bad, about five minutes and it fired right up, so. Gonna get this backed out, let the batteries charge up for a little bit while I have it running. And, uh, sneak the green card in here and see if we can get hooked on the disc there. Should have waited to uh, unplug my camera cables, but oh well. Disc out. I need to switch over my camera cables in the back here to my auto steer. I'm gonna see how well this goes. I had to restart the whole system. I swapped out the cables while I was still on, but it wasn't working properly. So just restarted it. Now I gotta wait for my satellite to be green there in the corner. Oh, there we go. I should be good to go. I just made a new field already. Uh, this thing is about 28 feet wide. I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but this farm is tiled. And it's sandier ground for the most part. So I think I should be okay, even for how wet it's been this week off all really but should be okay here we'll just try up here by that barnyard and in the sandy stuff see how well this works looks pretty decent just looking at the ground so Disc here, you're able to adjust the tilt uh, if you want more pressure in the back or in the front. I kind of run somewhere in the middle, maybe more towards the back at C. I don't know what's right or wrong, but it seems like when you start sitting it on the ground, it seems pretty level at C. You'll watch this tip way back right now, but once you start actually setting it down, it levels right out. So that's pretty level, and the blades aren't touching the ground, or barely. It's hard to tell on camera, but yeah, I usually run between C and D, somewhere around there. Mobile drive is on. And, uh, get this to go. Adjust the depth stop, how deep it's cutting in. Gonna get an AB line set up right now. Always kind of work on a little bit of an angle and tillage.
1800 RPMs going about 5.8, 11, 11th gear. We talked about pulling this with the 8130 while this was still busy with the grain cart, but just ran out of time and then we finished up harvest. So this does have a little bit more power and weight. The tires are a lot bigger on this, but I'm really curious to see how that 8130 would have handled this. Right now, I'm not going super deep or anything. You can hear, you can feel the 8410 working compared to the Track Challenger. The Track Challenger will pull this thing around like it's nothing. Um, and that's what we usually pull this with. So far, I've been in here for 20 minutes or so. Pretty smooth sailing. Lots of little fields on this farm. Yeah, this is just kind of how we handle corn stalks. If we don't choose a plot, we usually end up riding them with our disc. So, lots of different ways people deal with them. Uh, I believe once upon a time, Dad had a flail chopper that he'd pull behind one of his old tractors. I don't know how big it was. Um, I'm pretty sure those were pretty slow going. That's probably why we don't have one anymore, but uh, it's been a long time since I talked to him about that, so I don't remember anything about it. But I'm pretty sure he had one. It was kind of before my time. Overall, this has been working out for us, just grinding them up with the disc. Uh, get some dirt on top of them, chop them up a little bit. The winter time always helps break stuff down. Uh, we like to get all the corn stalks worked in in the fall if we can help it. So that way when springtime rolls around, it seems like all the stalks and trash and residue and everything kind of acts like a wet blanket. And it's harder for the fields to dry out. If we're able to get this stuff worked in the fall, uh, it seems like we're able to get in the fields just a little bit quicker. Stuff will dry out just a little bit better and faster. So, with the disc, you can't really see it because the sun's clearing, but I've been going like every other round, so I don't have to turn as sharp on the end there. I don't have to pick up on the disc that much. I'll just lift it up ever so slightly, and then uh, I can put the pressure back on. But it just seems to go a little bit faster than trying to pick the disc up turn sharp and get on the next round where you got GPS. Just do it this way, it seems to go a little bit faster. I should have brought a chainsaw with me today. This is the one. There's a lot of little fence rows on this farm and there's a handful of trees laying out in the field when we're harvesting. So, a little late for that now, but had to take care of it in the spring, I guess. I believe there's roughly a little over 80 acres of corn stalks to do here.
got this first field done. I gotta fold up, I'm gonna cross over, get into this little field here. getting into the big field. I did end up bringing the drone out today, so I was waiting to get in the big field to get that out. Nice sunny day for it, so maybe we can get some good footage.
towards the north edge here, but I think this is going to be it. Starting to get too wet. Just water standing here, avoid this spot. And then uh, there's even a couple bird baths kind of in the center here, so I think I'm just going to call it for this field. When I came back out here through the woods, I skipped the little 15 acre field on the other end of that ditch there. So I'm gonna do that real quick, which is right next to the woods. I just wanted to get in the big field and get going. I'll make this my last pass. It's even pretty, there's a little wet right here. You can kind of tell. This will be my last pass here. And then I'm gonna do the headland along the east end of the woods. And then I'll switch over to that other field. Yeah, there's water steam going into the hut with me right there. this up head back to the barn I'm gonna jump in the challenger and I'm gonna take that home now that's going to do it for this video so if you made it to the end thank you thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one